But we start in the NBA after a big shakeup within the Bucks organization. Adrian Griffin is out as head coach midway through his first season running a team. The Bucks may be 30 and 13, good for second in the Eastern Conference, but they're one of the league's worst in terms of opponent points per game. They're 22nd in defensive efficiency this season after being fourth last season. Time for more money with Matt Moore and Jay Money. Great to see you guys. Matt, I'll start with you because you wrote an extensive column for Action Network about this. Why was the decision made to move on from Griffin? Yeah, Maria, this was a long time coming. This wasn't any sort of surprise for anyone that's paid attention um, to what's been going on in Milwaukee this season. It's going to surprise a lot of people because they look at the overall record for the Bucs and go, but they were second best team in the Eastern Conference. But whenever you looked under the hood, you saw that there were a lot of problems there. Uh, the indication was pretty much that Griffin started losing the players from the get-go. There's a lot of indications that Damian Lillard always had some skepticism about him. Obviously, Terry Stotts, Dame's old coach, left in preseason. That was a warning sign. Then you have Bobby Portis calling out the coach after the in-season tournament reported by Chris Haynes. Uh, Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez had to have heavy conversations with Griffin about changing his scheme in order to get the defense back on track, and it never did. And then finally... It seemed over the last couple of weeks that like he'd lost the confidence of Giannis. Giannis was a huge advocate for Griffin's hiring this summer. He was a major voice in the front office's decision to hire Griffin. And when Giannis lost that confidence in Griffin, that may have been his kind of last step before being let go. Uh, I think when you look at it, the team, confidence was spiraling despite the record. And it's a good indication sometimes that how the players feel about their own game, especially with a veteran squad like this that's competing for a championship, that's more important than just looking at the record and telling yourself that everything's fine. In my opinion, you know, when I saw that the Bucks traded for Damian Lillard, I wouldn't have moved on from Budenholzer or even like gotten a first year head coach knowing that you're making that trade. Obviously hindsight's 2020 and they didn't know that, you know, until after the fact, but, but still they are now moving on and, and Doc Rivers is set to become the next head coach Jay, does this coaching change overall make you feel better or worse about Buck's futures? Well, I think you had made a really good point about how they hired him and then the trade happened because they just didn't expect to be having championship aspirations this year. But uh, in my opinion, I do think this could possibly really backfire on the books. What happens if they fired their first year coach? Uh, there was 30 and 13. I know there was a ton of things going on, but what happens if they start to drop to like the fifth uh, in the East with their new coach there? So I'm just kind of wondering what if it backfires? I still think they're maybe the third best team in the East. Um, I think maybe closer to four or five, but that's just me personally. I feel like like if they were playing the Cavs or the Pacers in a first round series like today, um, they might get kicked out of the first round here. So I'm still not a believer in their defenders. I know that coaching wise and schemes um, can can maybe sometimes um, hide that a little bit, but I'm still not. I, I know basketball and I watch a ton of basketball. And these guys, they don't I don't like their roster. I don't like their bench. Um, they obviously Giannis and Dame can go off in any game, but they have guys that are on their roster that are just plain and simple, not good defenders. So I don't know if you're going to have to run zone um, the whole game, but one on one, these guys will continue to get beat off the dribble, no matter who is the coach out there. And we've also seen Doc Rivers time and time again, blow a 3-1, 3-2 series leads in a play. Playoff. So uh, I just think this makes the Bucks even more of a regular season team. Let's see what happens in the playoffs. Matt? I think it makes them a little better. I think your futures plays on the Bucks are a little bit better now just because you have to make this type of move if the veterans aren't bought in. And now the veterans will be bought in. This is clearly a move that the veterans on that team, including Giannis, are going to sign off on and they're going to feel pretty good. Doc's consistent, okay? Doc's going to is very good at coaching principles. I talked to an NBA veteran this season. And he was talking to me about how the regular season is about working on your principles and the playoffs are about finding solutions. The problem with the Bucks this season is that they did not have any principles. Their principles were completely undermined by how they were playing. It did not fit the roster at all. They'll fix all those. The defense is going to be better. Jay's not wrong that Malik Beasley is touted as like their best perimeter defender. Yikes. That I agree there. That's a concern. But you can still manage with Chris Middleton. You can still manage with Brooke Lopez by putting them in better spots. And Giannis is still a hugely impactful defender. They'll play more defenders in the playoffs. Jay Crowder, those types of guys. They'll find options. I think Marjan Beauchamp actually has a, some upside in those capacities. They'll find answers on defense. 
But Jay's right, though, that the playoff concerns are a real issue because as good as Doc is at improving those principles, he struggles in finding answers. Mm -hmm. The playoffs now are about are not about how good you can be. It's about finding solutions to the problems presented. Denver was one of the best teams at that last season. Guess what? They won the title. We saw teams that could answer and formulate different solutions to the problems presented round by round. Those are the ones that advance now. Rivers has never been strong at that. He was most successful in 2008 with the Celtics team where they were just better than everybody else at what they did. But without that kind of advantage, it really is going to put a limitation on what they can achieve. So no, I don't love, I don't think, I don't want a position on the Bucks as an Eastern Conference champion right now. But I do think that there will be ways in which they will look better over the back half of the season. And it's going to improve their standing in various matchups. They have a better shot now moving on from Griffin and adding Doc but against the top tier of the East, they're still very low in terms of the coaching pecking order, especially given the fact that one of the weakest coaches in the Eastern Conference, Joe Missoula, he outcoached Doc last year. So all of this leads to this is not the time to be buying in on the Bucks. Let's see what Doc does with them first and especially what kind of matchups they're going to get in the playoffs. Absolutely. They needed to make a change, but we're still not sold. And then as far as defense is concerned, I agree with Jay that there are clear holes you know, on this roster, but defense is a commitment and it's a lot harder to commit on that end when you don't believe in the coaching and you don't believe in the direction of the team. So hopefully we'll see that improve. Now, if you want to see what the Bucks will look like without Griffin coaching against the hottest team in the NBA, the Cavs, and maybe make some bets, go to the NBA app on League Pass, find that game, click on bet stream because I'm going to be hanging out um, and you can watch along with me and our experts starting at eight Eastern. As for the rest of the slate tonight, Jay, what's your best bet? I will say that um, I do think the books come out with a new sense of energy tonight. So it's not a it's not my best play of the day, but I wouldn't be surprised if the books came out in the first quarter and first half with just like a just like happy that uh, that they got a change of scenery over there as far as the coaching line. So, but my best play of the day is I mean it's a little ugly. I'm going with the Detroit Pistons on the money line in this one, but don't look now. I mean they're playing a lot better basketball. They're five and zero against the spread in their last five games. Uh, a couple of those games were versus the Bucks and the Timberwolves as well, where they really had chances to. Win win those games you have the short they're going up against the charlotte hornets here um that have six more have six more one games in them but they're the underdog in this game the charlotte hornets are obviously coming off a win they're one in eight straight up coming off a win this season i think it's going to be one in nine tonight give me the detroit pistons in this game uh, to win outright i really like it i mean charlotte had no business beating the the t-wolves and meanwhile uh the pistons are one of those teams that played the bucks really tough um, the other night. So Matt, what about you? What are you betting tonight? Uh, two things real quick. The Pistons are 0-2 as a favorite this season. This is a gutsy pick. 0-3. 0-3, Matt. By Jay, 0-3. This is a <laughs> yeah. one of, It's oh. going to be 1-3 after tonight. I just wanted to correct you there. 0-3 straight up and against the spread as favorite. It's going to be 1-3 tonight. But by Jay, that's a that's oh, a bold okay. pick. I actually think Charles has been playing okay. Plus, uh, I also just want to commend our video crew for finding Pistons highlights to put together a reel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that must have took some some deep dives. So to see them trying to watch the terrible Bucks defense and put that together. That was there you go. Watch. Anyway, uh, my best bet for tonight's the under 241 Mavs and Suns. Uh, I've got this projected at 237. So I've got about four points of value. The Suns have actually had the number five defense over the last two weeks. They've turned a corner on that end. I don't know if that's sustainable over the long term, but it's how they're playing right now. The Mavs under has hit in four of their last six. There's a kind of an interesting trend happening. If you pay attention kind of to the, the chunks of the season, Dallas is slowing down more and more. They started off as a real high paced team and they're still in the, in the top half of the league in pace, but they're slowly dipping down as the season goes along, getting more and more into Luka Doncic dribbles the air out of the ball and then somebody shoots a three. That takes more time off the clock. That gets us into a better spot here. The Suns also running a little bit less, focusing on defense. I think pace is going to be a little bit lower than this number projects. So I'll take the under 241 in Mavericks and Suns tonight. Matt Moore, Jay Money, I always love doing these segments with you guys. Thanks so much for joining Green Dot Daily. Thank you. Anytime, Maria. 